This department is, is world leading in its field. We have very well known principal investigators, excellent collaborations with other laboratories. We're in a position to ultimately perform cutting edge research. We get bloods coming in from our participants and we need to extract DNA from those bloods. Red blood cells don't contain any DNA, so the first thing we need to do is get rid of those. And we do that by breaking them open with a sugar solution. So we spin down the samples and precipitate white blood cells in a centrifuge. We then pour off the red blood cells because we don't want that. The next stage is to get the DNA out of the white blood cells that we have left at the bottom of the tube. So we break those open with a detergent, releasing the DNA so we have a soup of the contents of the cell. The next step is to eliminate the bits we don't want. And we do this by adding in a chemical that binds to the majority of the cellular contents to make it more soluble. DNA is hydrophilic, which means it likes water. If you put it in a hydrophobic environment, so an organic solvent like chloroform, which is the one we use, it will do its best to, to go into the water. Principally what we do, we mix up the, the chloroform and the water layers. The DNA will want to be in the water layer, it's hydrophilic, and all the cellular contents that we've treated will want to be in the chloroform layer, the hydrophobic area. So we give them a good mix. Where the water and the chloroform joins, it's very difficult to separate those two layers. So to make it more straightforward, we add in a, a resin and that creates a barrier layer between the two layers. We put that whole mixture into the centrifuge and that spins the samples down and we end up with three distinct layers. The top layer is the um, aqueous layer, so the water layer containing the DNA. Then you'll have a, a ready brown resin layer and all that does is create a semi-solid barrier between the layers. And then the bottom layer is the chloroform layer. We've still got DNA in solution with other contaminants that we don't want. So we need to take that layer into a fresh tube. We add in an excess of ethanol and that turns the, the solution much more hydrophobic because of the chemical properties of the, al of the alcohol. DNA is much less soluble in the alcohol. It literally just drops out of solution. That is where you see this, the, the clouds of white fluffy DNA forming. I find that really quite satisfying to see it forming when you add in the ethanol because you know that the procedure has worked correctly because you know you've got a good yield of sample to then use in the downstream applications.